Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Going to be giving you my predicted 11 for Manchester United's game against Villa Real. So I think Manchester United will go with the 4-2-3-1 formation. So in goal, going to go with David De Gea. Got to give De Gea a lot of credit. I think he's done really, really well so far this season. He did well in the last game against Watford. Despite Manchester United losing 4-1. Because De Gea saved two penalties against Watford. And he made some other good saves as well. He did well in the defeat to Man City before the international break. I recall De Gea making around four fantastic saves in that first half. This season is De Gea's 11th season at Manchester United. He's been a long servant. He's been with us since the Ferguson era. De Gea has got under two years left on his contract and he receives £375,000 a week. He has won everything domestically at the football club and he's made over 500 appearances for Man United in all competitions. Don't forget, De Gea reclaimed the number one spot back because in the summer he decided to cut short his holiday by two weeks to fight for the starting place and it did mention that he was determined to fight for his Man United future. <coughs> At right back, I'm going to go with Amon Wambasaka. <coughs> Defensively, Bissaka is superb, but the attacking side of his game is not so good. There's aspects of Amon Wan Bissaka's game that's got to improve. He's got to show more attacking intent, his crossing's got to improve, and his positioning has to improve. <coughs> but despite that, I think he's one of the best right backs we've had since Gary Neville. We got Bissaka for around fifty million from Crystal Palace back in the summer of twenty nineteen. And this season is his third full season at the club. The two centre halves I'm going to go with Eric Bailly and Harry Maguire. Eric Bailly obviously played no part against Watford. Bailly's only played three times this season, of what I recall anyway. Bailly obviously played in the 2-0 defeat to Manchester City before the international break. He was horrendous in that game because City's first goal was an own goal from Bailly, and it wasn't only the own goal in that game, his overall performance was very poor, and I was shocked in that aspect. Because Bailly put a very good performance out in the 2-2 draw against Atalanta, you know, he made some good blocks and some good interventions in that game. He also played well against West Ham in the Cup earlier on this season. But Bailly lost his place in the team a while ago, obviously with the signing of Varane in the summer transfer window. And obviously, <clears throat> when we had Solskjaer, Lindelof was preferred over Eric Bailly. Don't ask me why, because Bailly is a far superior manager, uh, player sorry, to Lindelof. The only element of concern about Bailly is injury prone. So in that aspect, is a liability. Towards the end of last season, he signed a new contract with Man United until 2024. 
as an option of a further year. He has been at the club now for five and a half years. We got him for £30 million from Villarreal back in 2016. So obviously if he does play, he will be reuniting with Villarreal. Harry Maguire. Obviously he played in the 4-1 defeat to Watford. And Maguire got sent off in the game. I think Maguire has got a free match ban in the league. Obviously Maguire won't be playing any part against Chelsea this weekend. So he's a big miss. But I do think Maguire has been very, very poor this season. And he's been even worse since he came back from that calf injury. Maguire had ligament damage in his ankle towards the end of last season. Manchester United overpaid for Maguire, you know, got him for £80 million from Leicester. So he's the most expensive centre-half in the world at the moment and the second most expensive signing at the club behind Pogba. Hopefully when we get a new manager though, we'll start to get the best out of Maguire. At left back, I'm going to go with Alex Tellez. Because Shaw may not be available for this game. Uh, Shaw got a head injury in the defeat to Watford. Uh, revert back to Telez though, you know, Telez only plays when Luke Shaw is not available. I've got to give Telez credit because in some of the games he has been involved in, he has done well, but I haven't really had much of a perception on him. You know, Telez had an injury earlier on this season. The reason we brought Alex Telez in was to provide competition for Luke Shaw. You know, we got to Les in a deal worth, what, £15.4 million from Porto last year. Centre midfield, I'm going to go with Fred and Donny van der Beek. Um, I don't think Fred played any part in the 4-1 defeat to Watford. Uh, no, he didn't, because obviously it was Matic alongside McTominay in the centre midfield against Watford. Fred, as you all know, I've got my strong reservations about him, even though he has had his good games at Manchester United. Man United overpaid for Fred, got him for £50 million from Shakhtar Donetsk. Got to make an admission though regarding Fred. I think he was an exceptional player during his time in Ukraine. Uh, Donny van der Beek. Yes, sir, I've been hearing that there's a very good chance he will start in this game. And he deserves to start. Uh, van der Beek didn't start against Watford, but he did come on. And he made an instant impact. You know, he scored. That was only his second goal for the club. He was also trying to make things happen. And he got in some very good positions. You know, I think Van der Beek is leaving Manchester United in January. The player himself confirmed that. You know, Van der Beek's enjoyed what a difficult year and a half or so at Manchester United. And this season is his second full season at the club. I expected Van der Beek to play a hell of a lot more than he has done because at the end of the day, we got him for what, £40 million, add-ons were included. He's got a contract with Man United till 2025. There's an option of a further year. And he's versatile, he can play in three different roles. <coughs> uh, the attacking midfielder, 
I'm going to go with Bruno Fernandes. Uh, Bruno Fernandes played in the 4-1 defeat to Watford and he was actually poor in that game. He was also poor in the 2-0 defeat to Man City before the international break. And there has been quite a few games where Fernandes has looked off the pace. But in a lot of games, he has been very consistent. You know, Fernandes starts the vast majority of Manchester United's games. He is one of the best signings we've made since Ferguson retired. You know, he's been a Manchester United player for almost two years now. You know, we got Fernandez from Sport in Lisbon back in January 2020. Earlier on this season, Fernandez did make it clear that he wants to stay at Man United. And when he first came to Man United, he said, I've come to Manchester to win trophies. Fernandez has got a contract with Man United till 2025. There's an option of a further 12 months. On the right wing, I'm going to go with Jaden Sancho. Uh, Sancho actually played in the 4-1 defeat to Watford and he was played in the correct position for once. You see the best of Jaden Sancho on that right wing. I don't think he was too bad against Watford, but let's put it this way, he wasn't brilliant. Sancho's been very poor for Manchester United so far. But hopefully when we do get a new manager, you know, we'll start to get the best out of Sancho because overall he is a good player. Providing that Sancho's used correctly, he will do well. It does take some players' time to settle in. Sancho did endure four good years with Borussia Dortmund. And I was hoping that at Man United he could replicate what he did in his four years with Dortmund. You know, Man United got Sancho for £78 million. Obviously, add-ons were included. We paid like £73 million up front. Sancho's got a contract with Man United till June 2026. There's an option of a further year. On the left win... I'm going to go with Marcus Rashford. You know, Rashford has done well in quite a few games since he come back, but he's also enjoyed some poor games as well. Don't forget, at one point, Rashford was out with a shoulder injury for a while. And at one point, he had to have an operation on his shoulder. Uh, yes, we need to keep Rashford on the left wing. That's where he plays a lot now. You know, Rashford's mostly effective from the left wing. He's far superior on the left wing to the right wing and up top. Rashford has been part of the club for a long time. He's been a United player since the age of seven. And he's been in our senior squad since 2016. Uh, Rashford has got a contract with Man United until 2023. And the striker, I'm going to go with Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, Ronaldo played in the 4-1 defeat to Watford. Obviously, he got the assist for Donny van der Beek's goal. That's two assists Ronaldo's got now since he re-signed for the club. And Ronaldo has scored nine goals in all competitions so far since he re-signed. Ronaldo 
weren't brilliant though against Watford, even though he did get an assist. And he was anonymous in the 2-0 defeat to Man City. Because in that game against City, he was anonymous. He got very little service, but he did have two chances in the game against City. But Ronaldo is the best player in the world overall. He has won 32 major trophies in his playing career, including five Ballon d'Ors. Um, he's got back-to-back -back awards as well as Ronaldo since he re-signed because he got named Player of the Month for October and he got named Premier League Player of the Month for September. You know, Ronaldo's got a contract with Man United until 2023. There's an option of a further year. He receives £480,000 a week, so he's the highest earner at Man United. Ronaldo wears a number seven shirt. We got him for £19.8 million, add-ons were included. I think Man United paid like £12.7 million up front. So that's how I think Manchester United could line up against Villarreal tomorrow. As you all know, we have got some players missing. Um, obviously, Mason Greenwood is out with COVID for a few weeks, so he... He's not in contention to play in this game. Pogba, he's out with injury for the rest of the year. Edison Cavani, he's out with injury until December. Uh, Luke Shaw's now got a head injury, like I mentioned earlier on in the video. Uh, Varane, you know, he's another one that's out with injury. Did I mention him? So there you go. If Manchester United beat Villarreal... They will be in the knockout stage of the competition with one game to spare. Now Manchester United are coming into this game on the back of a 4-1 defeat to Watford. You know, Man United have only won one of their last seven in all competitions. That's terrible. Uh, like I mentioned on the preview earlier on today, uh, Michael Carrick will take charge for this game. Because not so long ago, it got announced that Michael Carrick has taken over as the interim manager following the dismissal of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer yesterday morning. Uh, Manchester United are obviously looking for an interim manager until the end of the season. Manchester United beat Villarreal in the reverse fixture at Old Trafford, 2-1. Early on in the season, and Ronaldo scored the winner in that game. It was good to see Man United get revenge on Villarreal from last season's final because last season Villarreal beat Man United in the Europa League final 11-10 on penalties. Villarreal, they haven't done well so far this season in La Liga. You know, they're sitting, what, 12th in La Liga at the moment. Villarreal are coming into this game 
Charin 1 1 with Celta Vigo. Villarreal's manager is Unai Emery. He's been Villarreal manager for over a year. And he's got a contract with Villarreal until 2023. Earlier on this season, Unai Emery rejected the Newcastle job. Um, he's won a few trophies as Unai Emery in his managerial career. Um, obviously, he's won the Europa League with his current team, Villarreal. He also won a few Europa Leagues when he managed Sevilla. Um, he nearly won the Europa League when he was Arsenal manager, but he didn't win it. Unai Emery was Arsenal manager for around 18 months and then obviously Arsenal sacked him. Um, like I said on the preview, I do know a few of Villarreal's players. Obviously one of their key players is Gerard Moreno. Um, he won't be in contention to play in this game because he's out with injury. So that's good news from a Man United perspective. Uh, Villarreal have also got Alberto Moreno, or Moreno, however you pronounce it. They've also got Dan Juma. Uh, they've also got Samuel Chuck Wuezi. Uh, they've also got Serge Aurier. They got him from Tottenham. Uh, they've got Juan Fife. I think they also got him from Tottenham. Uh, they've also got Paul Torres. Paul Torres is one of their centre halves. Uh, Manchester United were linked with Paul Torres a long time ago. They've also got Capu. They've got Francis Coquelin. They've got Manu Marlins. They've got Raul Albiol. So they are quite a few of Villarreal's players. Now... You obviously know the news on Mauricio Potticino. Uh, Fabrizio Romano confirms that Mauricio Potticino is Manchester United's number one choice. And talks have begun. Earlier on today, Samuel Luckhurst said that Potocino wants to join Man United now rather than wait until the summer. Potocino is ready to quit PSG to become Manchester United manager now. Potocino is unhappy in the French capital. Potocino has a full season left on his PSG contract. Manchester United should have got Potocino. After we sat Mourinho, but Manchester United decided to go with Solskjaer instead. I think Potocino would be the right manager for Manchester United. Despite him 
hardly winning anything. Um, I think he has won one trophy um, at PSG. Uh, Potocino is well proven in the Premier League as well, which is beneficial. Um, obviously, Potocino did endure a five and a half year tenure with Tottenham, and analysing the vast majority of his tenure when he was at Tottenham, Tottenham were competing in and out of the top four. And in 2018, Potocino guided Tottenham to their first ever Champions League final. Uh, Potocino also managed Southampton, don't forget. He wasn't at Southampton that long, but he still guided Southampton to their highest ever finish in the Premier League. So they're the clubs he's managed in the Premier League. And uh, before, he managed Espanyol. Um, I've now disregarded Zinedine Zidane coming to Manchester United. Because reports have said today that Zinedine Zidane is not interested in taking over at Manchester United as he doesn't feel ready for the Premier League at the moment and obviously Zidane is wanted by PSG. Yeah, if Zidane goes to PSG, we'll definitely get Mauricio Potocino. Um, it did say last, last week that Zinedine Zidane pretty much agreed to take the France job. And it did say last week that Zidane is not available until the summer because he wants to take a break until the summer, it said. It did say last week as well that Zidane's wife was not attracted to the idea of living in Manchester. You know, Zidane is managerless. He left Real Madrid in the summer. You've got to admire what he did at Real Madrid. He won a lot of trophies at Real Madrid. So, reflecting on that, he's got a good pedigree behind him. The only club he's managed so far in his managerial career is Real Madrid. You know, Zidane's never managed in the Premier League. And I did say before, it would be good for him to come and experience the Premier League. I thought Zidane's close relationships with Ronaldo and Varane would have persuaded him to join. Um, obviously, Eric Ten Hag's still been spoken about. I presume there's a lot of United fans that would like to see him come in. Um, I like the way he develops the youth, Eric Ten Hag. Um, he's won a few trophies at Ajax and he's been Ajax manager for four years. Uh, Brendan Rodgers, you know, he's still been spoken about as well. But recently, Brendan Rodgers dismissed the links to Manchester United and Rodgers said, I'm proud to be at Leicester. The other week, it said Rodgers was house hunting in Cheshire. And it did mention at that point that Rodgers was the favourite to replace Solskjaer. So there you go. So Man United are now on the hunt for their fifth permanent manager since Ferguson. You know, four managers have been sat since Ferguson. That's Moyes, Van Gaal, Mourinho and Dolly Gunnar Solskjaer. Solskjaer was obviously officially sat by Manchester United yesterday morning following the 4-1 defeat to Watford. And as you all know, yesterday Solskjaer gave a farewell interview and he got emotional in that interview. Uh, so anyway guys, that's everything to update you with. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless and I'll see you all again very, very soon.